Good evening. You're listening to Adrenaline Radio. This is 1680 on your AM dial. I'm Fred Blanchard, your host for Adrenaline Motorsports. And this evening, uh, I'm going to share with you folks a little bit about uh, a personal project that uh, myself and my partners have, and it relates to uh, land speed racing. We went to uh, uh, El Mirage, uh, uh, I believe the first event was... uh, June, and uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, have uh, Bri, uh, Rich Mansion there with us. I asked him to come by and give us a hand, and he was very willing to help us out and turned out to be a very, very good teacher for Ben York, uh, first-time driver for this particular car. Uh, I must t- tell you that uh, when you close down the lid on one of these cars and you're inside of it with your helmet and fire suit, It's a little different feeling than uh, being out in the open and you get in your regular street rod or street sedan or whatever you have and uh, and just start driving down the street and step on the gas and you got that power. This thing, uh, you're all enclosed and and you start to think a lot about uh, wanting to get the job done real quick because uh, being enclosed in there and with the straps tightened around you and the whole thing and uh, it's a totally different feeling and. Ben York did have that feeling, and we had to go through uh, up and down, back and forth a couple of times to get in and out, get in and out several times for him to feel, finally, get away from that queasy feeling of being uh, uh, kind of cramped inside something you couldn't get out of. And so we went through that, which is, again, a brand-new driver, brand-new car, brand-new experience. Uh, these are the things that we encounter. Uh, the thing that we didn't encounter was uh, when we got to the dry lakes, uh, it was the first time that uh, we had started a car with Ben in the car. That was a new experience. And he realized now that uh, we had a little bit of horsepower with this, this particular motor. Again, it was a big block Chevrolet supercharged, which an engine which was uh, Rich Mansion provided uh, as part of the package that we acquired from him. And him being uh, quite a teacher, and he, he basically went through the procedures of starting and running the car on a lake bed, which was a really a big deal. The other thing is that uh, the motor that we run is uh, we call a gas engine, but in reality, it's not gas that we use. We use a special gas, which is basically it's called racing fuel, but it's a high octane gas used for supercharged engines. And each type of engine you run. Uh, requires a different type of a fuel. For example, if you run a turbocharged engine, uh, they have a little different mixture of race gas. If you run a root-style supercharger, there again is just a little bit different mixture of that fuel. So uh, when you run race gas, uh, you got to know kind of where you're going with the type of fuel uh, that you're going to run. And fortunately enough for us, uh, we had some guidance there from the powers that be. And again, Even though uh, I've had experience with running engines uh, and this type of thing and uh, working for uh, Nick Arias Racing Components, uh, and uh, that was pretty much uh, what we had pretty much picked up over the years uh, from that type of experience. But now we were ready to uh, uh, get the car ready for a run, and so our approach was when Rich was there, he said, well, now we're going to warm the car up. It was early in the morning when I got there the, the second day, and and it was pretty cool out there, and we were checking all the oil levels in the transmission and in the motor. And and with this engine that we have, we, it's, we have a dry sump oil system, meaning to you that uh, it's an external oil tank and it has an external oil pump, which pumps engine in the oil into the engine and then it takes it out of the engine and put runs it back through the tank again through filters and what have you so we have a larger capacity oil capacity than you have in a regular passenger car and we have about uh about 20 quarts of oil we can carry on this particular vehicle so uh, we have enough oil to to take care of the bearing needs and so we don't burn the motor up and and we have to heat it in the morning. The tank comes with a heater on it. We plug it into a, a generator, and we heat the oil, and that's kind of what we do. And and then, of course, uh, you have an engine warm-up procedure that we do. So early in the morning, you fire the engine up, run it, and make sure everything is good, and you adjust your valves and things. And then uh, when all of the procedures are done and we have all the right pressures and temperatures, then everything is put back together, and then we take it up to the line. 
being uh, a rookie, uh, which was basically Ben uh, being a rookie, even though the car's not a rookie, Ben York is a rookie, so they have a special lineup there uh, for Ben to be in where there's the rookie line. So uh, we lined up in the rookie line. We were directed to get on over there, and they told us that uh, the procedures on the lake bed is that when you uh, get ready to run, uh, there's cars ahead of us that are going to run, and they're, they're really the points leaders in SCTA, Time and Association program. They, uh, they're they 12 different clubs, and each of the clubs, uh, as they run, they earn points. And if you set a record or set top time in your class or whatever, you accumulate these points, and so the first 25 points leaders of all 12 clubs get the run first because they get the best run on the on the dry lake bed first, and then any and then the rest. There's another 25 after that, but the rookies get the run after the the first 25. So we were blessed to be able to uh, uh, get up there in line, and uh, and uh, the, our requirements as a new 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 owner, new car, uh, new rookie driver are that you. Uh, have to run under a certain speed. In our case, the, with a Lakester and a big engine that we had, supposedly, uh, our, our, our requirements were to run 150 miles an hour or less in speed for the full length of the course, which in this case at the Dry Lakes, uh, the course is uh, a mile and a third of running area. And so uh, Rich, uh, then, Rich Manchin then coached Ben York and, and uh told him basically what RPM range that we calculated the RPM range with the tire size and the gear ratio we had. So we figured it we would try to run uh, at uh, 5,000 RPM to 5,500 RPM, and that we have no speedometer. These cars do not have speedometers in them. They have tachometers only, and so we have to base it on engine RPM. And so uh, we, our, our time came... Our, our, our time came to run the car. We started it up, got uh, we were ready to go, and so we we pushed start these cars. And so uh, I pushed started, and uh, Ben took off and uh, uh, accelerated, and uh, the car disappeared in a cloud of dust. And uh, uh, then uh, he ran through the full course and uh, turned out, and uh, I went to pick him up, and the. Uh, the chief uh, inspector for SCTA is a gentleman by the name of uh, Lee Kennedy, and he was at the o- other end uh, uh, when Ben stopped the car and turned out. And uh, in this process of first-time driver, you've got to go through a procedure with uh, showing those who are in charge that you can manage the car, steer it, uh, deploy the chutes, and turn out properly and get over by the return road near a line of red uh, cones that they have set up for this this event. And so we got to the cones uh, when Ben was getting out of the car, and Lee Kennedy was already there. And we had discovered that we had gone beyond what we were supposed to run. We ran 178 miles an hour on our first run. And we thought we were really in trouble because uh, we may not get a chance to run again because of what we had just done. So um, Rich Manchin showed up, and the discussion was had as to the car not being set up to run the Dry Lakes, but more set up to run Bonneville, and so the gears were set accordingly to that need. And so they went to talk to the officials, and so the officials agreed that uh, if we ran under... Uh, 100 miles an hour, right at 100 miles an hour, we would get our first license. So we prepped the car again and went back to the line, and and that was pretty much uh, our our second run. We made our second run, and uh, we got all the way up to 93 miles an hour. So I guess we, we felt right in place here.